Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 61 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play. This game pack by Jittycat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. So, before I get started, a couple of bits of news. For one, I was, well, not me. So, there's a Minecraft channel known as The British Experience, in which my skin, which you can't see right here, but you can now, was featured in a bit of a video. Uh, they're doing kind of a roleplay take on a Minecraft Let's Play with three people. They're kind of funny. You've got an annotation link up on the left. Go check them out. See what you think. My skin here uh, was used with permission in a little bit of a video inside of the game. You'll have to see it. I, I It's pretty cool, actually. I was pretty happy with what they did. It was a lot of fun. Um, just one warning though, that video is not safe for kids. There is a bit of harsh language. Not unreasonably so, but it's still not good for your six-year-old. Uh, moving on. Today, I'm launching a new Let's Play. I am starting a series on Transistor because Supergiant games are awesome and Transistor is a fantastic game. So, you've got a link on your screen right now showing where the first episode of my new Transistor Let's Play is going to be. It's been an experiment as I'm teaching myself to do live commentary in the middle of it. Check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments on that video. Give it a like if it's good, and if not, tell me so. All right, that's enough news. That's enough announcements. Let's get into the meat of today's episode, which is going to be making the Quantum Network Bridge. So... I, now that I have the Quantum Entangled Singularities, the next step along the way is to get myself a couple of Quantum... I've got a lot of Quantum Bees. A lot of Quantum Bees. Uh, quantum Field Rings. And the Quantum Field Rings are crafted from Iron, Basic Processors, Advanced Processor, ME Cable, and Energy Cell. The Applied Energy, energy Cell is made with Fluix, Crystals, Iron, and Gits, and Glass. And I'm going to make one of... Hmm. And I'm also going to make myself some Fluix Crystals, aren't I? I'm going to craft some of these by hand because they're required for the quests. And then, let's see, I needed energy. No, no, yep, energy cell. There we go. Nope, I want to craft it by hand. That's right. Okay, fantastic. And the quantum field ring. Excellent. So I'm going to need a total of eight of those. Now that I've made one by hand, I can make the other seven automatically. And I can just kind of, hmm, still trying to make more purple dye. Stop that. It's also trying to make more wax casts. Stop that too. Awesome. Okay. There we go. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to need eight more too, but I'll grab those in a moment. So I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to show you how this thing gets set up. Oh, but wait, before I go any further, I actually forgot something. I need the quantum link chamber, which I don't have programmed into the system. I knew I was forgetting something. So quantum link chamber is made with fluix pearls and quartz glass. So I'm going to craft myself some quartz glass and some fluix pearls, which requires a whole bunch of stuff I don't have. That's okay. I'm doing all of this crafting by hand, like I said, because I want to... That's quartz, quartz, plastic, redstone. Perfect. I want to make sure that I'm getting credit for crafting these from... Uh, for the quests. Specifically, the bragging rights quest. Hmm. Ah, right. Okay, so I'm going to need a lot more of those Fluex pearls. Two, three, one, two, three, four. There we go. Fantastic. Now, one of you. Can you make quartz glass for me? Yes, you can. Awesome. And one more of you. And... While I'm at it, make myself eight more of the quantum field ring. So I can set up both sides of this. So the quantum field ring gets built in a bit of, well, it gets built in a ring. I'm going to stick it right here because this is going to give me just enough room as well as access to everything I need. You put the link chamber in the center and it turns into this guy here, which you can power with... It needs to be powered externally. You can't power it from the ME system. You need to hook up power to one of these quantum field rings. 
Uh, it does not look like you can power there, but you can there. Okay. So let me remove those or else I'll never get out of here. There we go. And to actually have it work with your AE system, you need to connect it by your preferred cable. I use covered cable cable purely for the aesthetic value. Huh. It doesn't look like there's a nice, happy way for me to connect that, is there? Um, no. No, there really isn't. That's a shame. Hang on, I know what I can do. I can actually run a line right down here. And that'll be a little bit better. There we go. And that also needs to connect to one of the main pillars. Now, if I go downstairs, take a look at my ME controller, I should be able to see that one, hmm, four quantum field rings and one quantum link chamber are connected. I need to put one of my pair of quantum entangled singularities on the inside of that. You get a really cool graphic effect. And now I need to head to the nether and set up the other side of this. So, at the quarry. I've taken the time to run a little bit of cable in advance and make myself a nice spot to build this right here. And I really should have brought my flight potion with me. That's okay. And I pump pump it uh put in this guy. Blast. There we go. Or not. Yeah, this would be a lot easier if I had remembered my flight potion. Field ring, field ring, field ring. All right, that's enough. Gonna go grab it. All right, that's a little bit better. So I'm going to feed it power from my tesseract, which is also still supplying power to my ender quarry. Or nether quarry, depending on how you look at it. And I'm gonna hook it up to the cable right here and provide the link. And if I pop back to the overworld, now I should be able to see them connected to my ME controller. Using quite a bit of power. Eight quantum field rings, two quantum link chambers. Fantastic. And a whole mess of cable. Awesome. So, how is this going to help me? Well, I already have my auto anvil here. I'm actually going to need to move my energetic infuser. He can go live over here. And he can be set to redstone ignored. I can turn him off entirely. Maybe someday I'll set up to automatically refill my flux capacitor through my uh, applied energistics system. That would be kind of fun. So what am, I, what am I gonna do with that applied energistics access point over there? Oh, I'm actually finally taxing my power to the limits. All right, let me solve this issue back soon. Alrighty, folks, so I did some testing, and it is definitely true. I have overloaded my system's ability, that one reactor, to produce power. Knew it was going to happen someday. So for the time being, I've disconnected this, because otherwise my entire applied energistic system shuts down. This is even after attempting to attach a power relay and another energy cell. These are items you've seen me craft, or should have, and they just, that allows you to add more power from the system. That is basically a big battery. I'm now storing 42,000 megajoules, or Minecraft joules. Anyway, I'm storing a ton of energy. But as soon as I start supplying power to this quantum field ring, it draws on both sides and it's too much. So, it is time to set up a turbine, because that is how I can upgrade that reactor. And to do that, I'm going to need an awful lot of steel. So I have my Tinker's Steelworks high oven set up here, with a handful of casting basins and the full automization bit that you've seen me do before. Automization. Automation. How about we say real words? That would be great. I've got four stacks of iron blocks in there, and I'm going to give it the gunpowder, sand, and I believe redstone that it needs to function. And unfortunately, I did not have the time off camera to get the automation set up for it, so I'm going to have to basically babysit the thing to make it work properly. Let's get the reagents plopped in there, gunpowder, then redstone, then sand, and give it some blocks of charcoal. 
and it needs a redstone signal next to the controller to get running. I knew I forgot something. There we go. So that's going to need to get up to temperature, two or 3,000 degrees, I forget which. Um, I have it built six high so that I can do a whole bunch of processing all at once. You need it to be at least four. That right there would be the minimum. Otherwise, you can't reach the temperature needed to produce steel. That's a change as of the latest version that I did not go over last time. So I'm going to make myself another four stacks of steel blocks. And once those are ready, I will be back to build the turbine itself. You know what? Belay that. It occurred to me at... Oh, those are ducks. Yeah. Uh, after I cut that, it would be actually be kind of simple to set up the automation that I'm not doing at the moment. So... You just need yourself a few scorched ducks, and you need to take a look at where everything goes. So the gunpowder on top has that symbol, which means we need to set, the, let's set the top one, it's set to that symbol, and let's give it a basic ex export bus with gunpowder, which should fill this up and should keep that full. Fantastical. Now I'm going to do the same thing for every other, each other one of these. Redstone has the little arrow symbol. I'm sure that there's like actual official technical names for these. I don't know them. Hmm. I don't know how to change that. That's not working. Okay, I have no idea why that went down the way it did. It was not a texture pack issue. It just had to break the block and put it back down. And now it's working. Yay, because reasons. So... Once again, it needs to be on that arrow-looking guy right there. And, whoops, I didn't want to put the redstone in just yet. I wanted to give it another basic export bus and some redstone. And now the redstone is being automatically supplied as well. Now, all I need to do is the same thing with sand. And the sand icon looks like the little wavy guys. Once again, I'm sure there are proper names for these. I probably even used them before in the series but I don't remember them. Okay. So now gunpowder, redstone, and sand is being supplied. I suppose I could even set it up with one more duct over here to feed in. Well, I, let's see. How much space do I have? I have one, two, three more spots. So I could easily automate the rest of this. However, I feel like this is good enough. The reagents are being supplied and the molten steel will be drained out it's literally in a place where i can just ignore it and wait for the steel to happen which is exactly where i want it to be now one other thing i'm going to need to do so to make the turbines instead of using lots of yellorium speaking of which i am going to need graphite do i have i have another 77 bars that should do me for now um, instead of using a whole bunch of yellorium for the turbine, spelling is an issue, the turbine blocks, I need cyanite, nether quartz, graphite. Oh, oh I can't make the creative steam generator? What a shame. Okay, uh, the controller uses plutonium. Uh, power port uses turbine housings. Fluid port, going to need a couple of these turbine housings. So the basic building block of this is cyanite, which is the expended yellorium. And I am definitely going to need... Oh, there's no turbine redstone port. Well, that's a shame. I'm not going to be able to redneck control the turbines the way I thought I could. Huh. Well, I suppose I'm just going to have to let the thing run and redstone control the reactor to shut off the flow of steam if I reach a certain amount of power. Anyway, I'll figure out plans for that later. Right now, I need to make those plutonium ingots, and they're actually fairly simple. All you need is... Wow, okay. It's not even showing. You need to make yourself a cyanite reprocessor. Let's see, do I have any plutonium? I actually have 16 from a request, but I want to show you how this is made. A cyanite reprocessor is a reactor casing, re yellorium fuel rod, some steel, some redstone. Easy peasy. I need the fuel rod. So apparently I have a bunch of extra reactor casings just lying around, because why not? There we are. One of those. One of those. And now if I grab some cyanite, we'll take a stack of it. 
I have 4,000. I've been expending a lot of fuel. I'm going to toss you right here for just the time being. And I'm going to give it a bunch of cyanite. And it's got a bunch of power. It also needs water. Uh, do I have a water setup? You know what I can do? I can very easily grab a fluid export bus. And I have an empty bucket in my inventory. I did a lot of uh, mucking about trying to make sure things would work. Or trying to make things work without the need to get into this today. Didn't work out. Alright. So. Once it has water, it will expend that water a bit at a time. I need to set the top to accept inputs. There we go. Simple as that. These work just like your thermal expansion machines. You can change the colors, and the colors are kind of outlined around the sides. For me, it's just a bunch of trial and error. So that's how you get your plutonium. It takes two cyanide ingots to produce one plutonium ingot, and you also can feed this right back into your reactor. It works as a fuel just like Eulorium, and I believe it also produces more cyanide, so it's another step of efficiency if you're not constantly producing more Eulorium the way I am. All right. Looks like everything's working out. Let's check our steel supply. It is increasing. I have gained 12 blocks of steel already. Fantastic. And there's four more about to come in. Really enjoy this high oven. It's a, it's a good setup. Tinker Steelworks is a fun addition to everything. Okay, so I'm going to let all of that steel process. It's going to take a while, but I'm going to just, you know, go AFK. Hang out in the corner with my axe of healing. And once everything's ready and I can build myself a reactor, I'll be back. I mean, a turbine. Yeah, I'm going to build a turbine. I have a reactor. Yeah. All right. I am up to 125 blocks of steel. That's probably a good place to get started. So I'm going to make sure that I craft a little bit of everything by hand just to be certain that I fulfill any quest requirements that will come up down the line. So I'm going to craft one of everything the hard way. Okay, where... I need to look at my... I took the time to teach my all of my turbine parts to my system while I was at it. I'm going to need a bucket. Turbine... There. You? Yes. I'm going to need one rotor bearing. Ah, but before I can do that, I need to make the shaft. Even taught my system how to unpack steel ingots into steel blocks. One shaft, one rotor blade. A little bit of turbine glass. This stuff is cool. I'm going to be using it. Don't need the computer port, obviously. Uh, hang on. Turbine. Two. There. Okay. Now, to make a turbine, you need one turbine controller, one turbine rotor bearing, at least one power tap port. I'm only going to need the one. You're going to need, probably going to want two fluid ports. You can technically do it with one, but it's not recommended. You will need a whole bunch of turbine glass and turbine housing to form the shell around the outside. And you're going to need, for the turbine I'm building, a total of 79 uh, more turbine rotor blades, meaning 80. And I'm going to need how many rotor shafts? Uh, let me think about this one for a moment. I need to do some mental math. A total of 15 turbine rotor shafts. So, I'm going to make 14 more of those. Now, to make the base of the turbine, this is going to be a 17 by 7 by 7 turbine. So, the floor of it is going to be that 7 by 17 or 119 housings. And since I like to build with glass and such, hmm, you know what? 
I'm just going to make myself an even thousand more turbine housings because I'm probably going to want to build more than one turbine over time. And I am going to need more enderium. Specifically, I want to use enderium blocks as my coils because they are flat out the best that I've been able to find. You will get the most efficiency out of them. I need 36 of these. I only have 20. So to make another 16, I'm going to need... 144 more enderium ingots and I can start that crafting while I head off to start building the turbine and I think I would like to stick my turbine hmm I want it somewhere that I can see it but I don't want it to take you know what this could be cool three four five six seven stick it right here shooting upwards Yeah, I like the sound of that. Hang on, I'm going to tear down this smeltery. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, got everything cleared out. Made myself a little 7x7 seven seven pad where I'm going to put down my turbine housing. And because I'm that guy, I'm going to speed things along with my builder's wand. Made this thing for building. Well, it's time to build. Whoops. It helps if you, you know, don't misclick. So I'm going to have a solid bottom to it and I think I'll have a non-solid top so one of the fun things about the turbines is they don't actually care what um, orientation you have them in you can have it going vertically just as easily as horizontal which is a lot of fun I think and by non-solid top what I mean is four five six all right I'm going to fill in that center with glass. Hope, no, hope none of you are afraid of heights. All right, so I need a whole bunch of turbine glass now. Obsidian, turbine glass. Well, folks, I got an emergency phone call just now and had an unfortunate incident where I accidentally muted my mic for the next 10 minutes or so, uh, during which I built the whole thing. So let me go over what I had done. So I have 36 blocks of endurium in there as my coils. The reason for this is, as shown in a spreadsheet below, every block can handle about 54 millibuckets of steam being converted into redstone flux. And... Every rotor blade, of which I have 80, can turn 25 millibuckets of steam into spin. Hello. So, with the reactor being capped at 2,000 millibuckets per tick, having that much, um, having 80 blades and 36 enderium is probably the maximum that can be produced. You appear to be slowing down. You should be get. What's going on? You're active. You are active. Okay, nope, still speeding up. So, you can see I'm reaching the first sweet spot of around 900 RPM. This thing should hit almost max speed. And I might need to regulate the steam down to about 1950 to get the perfect 1800 RPM out of it. In any case, this reactor is capable of producing an awful lot more steam than that. Right now it's only producing the 2,000 millibuckets per tick, and the core heat is way high. It's using about a third of a bucket. I mean, about a third of a millibucket per tick. So, yeah, I can definitely sh shut that down a bit. Um, I don't know the RedNet controller well enough to do that right now, so I'm just going to come up here, and I'm going to set everything to 50% by hand just so that the... I'm not burning a ton of extra fuel. Now, this is going to help me because despite that one turbine most likely not being able to produce significantly more than my reactor did, I can set up a bunch of turbines uh, around the reactor that all together will produce significantly more power than the reactor can. And out uh, from the turbine, I'm going to be outputting by Tesseract so that everything goes in all at the same time. And to do that, I actually want to redesign things over here a bit. So these 
uh, reactor power taps, no longer useful. These tesseracts, not doing what I want them to do anymore. I still want to have a bit of a um, battery. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set set up right here two of, uh, a couple of tesseracts. These are going to be set on energy storage. Hmm. You know what? This isn't going to work out the way I want it to. I will set up a uh, proper battery system another time. For now, though, this turbine power port is going to output to default. And it is going to send energy and block everything else. That went fast. Okay. So I'm going to let that get up to speed while I go build two more of the same turbine in the same configuration on the other two sides of this uh, um, reactor. Except I'm probably going to do it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and actually have the turbines facing upward because steam doesn't flow downward. Yeah, about that. Back soon. All right. Got my turbines built. They look pretty cool. I actually kind of really like this configuration. And I think that, whoops, when I need to add more, because I'm going to need to add more if I want to actually use all of the production of this reactor, I'm going to tuck them in right here and fill in these corners so I have just one massive power generation monolith over here. But that's in the future. Right now, I want to show you this turbine. It is getting towards maximum effective velocity of velocity of 1800 RPM. I'm going to need to come back and regulate it and figure out exactly how much steam will allow it to go at 1800. Um, if I do the calculations based on the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet shows an enderium coil usage at 54.13, which for 36 blocks by 54.13, I come up with 1,948.68, so I'm probably going to lo lower that max flow to 1949, which you can almost do. It looks like, oh no, you can do, you can absolutely alter it to that degree, no problem. But we'll see where it is. As you can see, it's already outputting almost 22,000 redstone flux per tick, which is pretty close to what the reactor was outputting on its own. I have three of them. So once these get up to speed, I will be easily producing over 60,000 redstone flux per tick. And in fact, I'm currently producing probably somewhere around 30,000. As I built these two concurrently, they're probably moving around the same speed. Yeah. In any case, tons of power going into the system now. I should easily be able to go and activate that quantum link. Let's see. Give you power. Go take a look. Huh, it's still cycling and blipping on and off. All right, folks, good news and bad news. So the good news is I figured out the problem. The bad news is building those turbines was not at all something that was helpful for the problem. However, now that they're all sped up to full speed and producing 23,698 RF a tick a piece, I think I'm in pretty good shape on power forever. I have about 70,000 RF per tick coming in. I should really go and build, a, oh, five more lasers. Yeah, because why not? I have super resource generation. Anyway, let me show you what the issue was. If I come over to my quarry in the nether, and I change my overlay to loaded chunks, which you can do by mouse wheeling over that, you see that none of these chunks going along this line are loaded which means that as soon as the cable got outside of range, it caused issues, which caused the network to be constantly refiguring. I mean, reconfiguring. So I've got my quantum field ring and my quantum link chamber and everything powered on both sides. If I pop back home and check out my controller. Well, for one, I can see that that's, you know, working fine. And if I take a look at my controller... I can see that I'm using around 80 megajoule, uh, Minecraft joules per tick. Let me change that to applied energistics power. The, you know, it's just a weird 
kind of uh, conversion. In any case, I've got my eight quantum field rings and my two quantum link chambers all hooked up and everything's functioning. Now, if I want to, which I do, I can make myself a wireless access point and 16 of these boosters. Take these with me so that I have wireless terminal access in the nether. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sending my, uh, what's it called? The pickaxe of the core into the auto anvil with some thaumium. To make that happen though, I'm going to need to make myself some automated thaumium production, which won't be too difficult. And I'm also going to need just uh, some time to get it all sorted out, which is going to be more time than I have for the rest of this episode. But let's plug you in and get 16 more of you in. Yay, now I can access everything from here. I don't think it'll quite reach all this way. There's a max range of like 64 on that. There is a point where I'll reach no signal. There we go. But I could easily toss another access point down right here if I wanted to. Or just move it since this is where I'm running the arcane bore. If I take a look, the arcane bore, I believe it's run through its course. Yeah, uh, no, it's actually run out of durability. And there's plenty more dirt that it could have dug up. Well, plenty is a bit of an overstatement. Hello, ghast. In any case, that's going to do it for today. Instead of getting the system I wanted set up, I set up a few turbines, which needed to be done at some point in time because I thought it would solve a problem that it didn't. Next time, I will be solving... Well, I mean, the problem is solved. Next time, I will be setting up the system to automate thaumium production and to automatically repair the pickaxe of the core, as well as starting in on another project to get more dirt faster. So, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, please leave a thumbs up. Let me know what you liked. If you have not, leave a thumbs down. Tell me what you didn't like. And I will see you next time.